we like to communicate with our friends and families by several multimedia we use whatsapp facebook twitter email etc now sales also don't like to stay in isolation they also want to talk to each other and the way they talk to each other is via cell signaling which is based on receptor and ligand interaction now just the way we use different kind of multimedia cells can also use different signals or different ligands which have different chemical nature for example cell can use protein type signaling molecules like insulin it can also use cholesterol derivatives like all the steroid hormones also amino acid derivatives like thyroid hormones and one unusual of that is a gaseous molecule nitric oxide now that's weird right so all these are amino acid derivative or something soluble now how a gaseous molecule could induce a signaling system and how cell can communicate with a gaseous molecule the whole video is about the mechanism by which nitric oxide could work like a signaling molecule and conveys certain messages inside the cell and this finding is was pretty weird but very important and new in the field of cell biology and as a result 1998 nobel prize in medicine was awarded to robert purgot louis uh, ignaro and fred murad so we'll look at a little bit of their work and try to understand how nitric oxide can evoke signaling pathway and by which uh, interactors it work on the cells now fried murad did a nice experiment where in a prepared uh, cultured muscle cells he injected nitroglycerin and the observation that he found is when he injected nitroglycerin the smooth muscle cell relaxes and also in the cultures when he put several drugs nitroglycerins etc he saw smooth muscle relaxation muscle relaxation not only that when he bubbled nitric oxide in this culture he saw the same kind of phenomena that tells him that nitroglycerin or similar drugs which sort of cause muscle relaxation work via intermediate which is nitric oxide now they became one step forward now let's try to understand how this exactly happens at a molecular level so here is a bundle of smooth muscle cells and these smooth muscle cells are innervated by several blood vessels right now let's just look at a portion of blood vessel and the smooth muscle cell so this is the higher magnification of that now people had a confusing observation in the field whenever they injected acetylcholine in the muscle cells directly by intramuscular injections they saw the muscles contract but whenever they injected acetylcholine in nearby blood vessels associated with the muscle they saw instead of constriction the muscles relax this is a total opposite observation and people wanted to find the mechanisms of it so as a result now we know that when we inject the acetylcholine in the nearby blood vessels it activates a uh, g protein coupled receptors which ultimately activates phospholipase c phospholipase c ultimately activates ip3 which allows store operated calcium release and calcium level increases in the cytosol once calcium level is increased it is sensed by calcium and calmodulin complex which activates nitric oxide synthesis now nitric oxide synthesis synthesizes nitric oxide from l arginine it converts it to l citrulline and nitric oxide now since nitric oxide is a diffusible molecule it diffuses out from the blood vessel cells and gets into the nearby muscle cells now point to be noted that nitric oxide is a transient signal because its half life is for few seconds now suddenly the muscle cell sees a huge amount of nitric oxide and the sensor by which nitric oxide could be sensed in the muscle cell is nitric oxide receptors which is lot similar 
to the hemoglobin or myoglobin, having a heme group inside it. However, whenever the nitric oxide binds to its receptor, which has a heme group, it converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Now, just like cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP is another second messenger molecule. Cyclic GMP binds to protein kinase G. Now, protein kinase G is a serentrionine kinase, and which is kind of present in all the eukaryotes from paramecium to human. And protein kinase G is pretty conserved. Protein kinase G is important for metabolism of sperm, nucleic acid synthesis, boot muscle relaxation, cell division, and many other functions. Today we will look at that how smooth muscle relaxation is induced by protein kinase G. Now we understood that protein kinase G is activated by a cyclic GMP binding which is indeed facilitated by nitric oxide dependent signaling, right? Now how does protein kinase G evoke at a cellular level the smooth muscle relaxation? What protein kinase G does is phosphorylate several targets which allows this cross bridge formation in order to in order for the muscle to con constrict the cross bridge need to form now protein kinase g with the complex molecular pathway prevent this cross bridge formation by phosphorylating several downstream target and as a result the smooth muscle cells cannot contract and they relax so this is how nitric oxide work via protein kinase g to allow smooth muscle construction co constriction and this kind of mechanism was pretty new at the end of 19th century. And that is why it lead to a noble discovery. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.